The title of this video is How Does a Global Compass Work? But maybe the title should have been What is a Global Compass and Why is it Different from a Normal Compass? And Why Would I Want to Spend My Money, Extra Money, on Something That I Will Almost Certainly Never Need? And while we're on the subject, why do I spend my money on a compass with an inclinometer, which is totally useless? And why are compass lanyards always too short? And no, <laughs> maybe that's a bit long for a title. So we'll keep the title as, how does a global compass work? And you know, that's a good question, so I'll try and answer. As you may know, magnets have two poles, which by convention are called the North Pole and the South Pole. As if you allow a magnet to spin freely, then it will align itself approximately to the top and the bottom of the world. Okay. Now, two north poles on a magnet will repel. Two similar poles will repel each other. They'll push away. Two opposite poles, a north and a south, will attract each other. Okay. Now, the Earth can be thought of as a just, in this case, a very big magnet. And as a big magnet, it has a north pole and a south pole. And it also has a magnetic field. So the main point of all that waffle was that opposite ends of a magnet attract each other, okay? And inside your compass, there is a magnet with a north and south pole. So the north pole of your magnet inside your compass will be attracted to the south pole of the Earth. Don't forget, opposite poles attract. The magnetic field lines fr form different size loops and these loops don't always come out of the top and the bottom of a magnet. Sometimes they come out of the side of the magnet, somewhere near the end, and then they go back into the side of the magnet, you know, near the other end. Okay, and it's this magnetic loop, the magnetic loops which come out the side of the magnet, and this is the reason that global compasses were invented. I've had to move and I'm hoping that the rain holds off just long enough for me to get this done. Now, what was I saying? Oh yes, if you imagine a very big magnet inside the Earth, it would look something like this. So unless you're on the equator where the field lines are running almost parallel to the ground, there will always be a dip in the field lines. So it's either coming out of the bottom of the Earth and going dipping back into the top of the Earth. Now, at the moment, the magnetic field lines flow towards an area which is at the top of the world. So if you again imagine the Earth as being a giant magnet, the area at the top of the Earth will actually be the south pole of the Earth's magnet. Is that a good way of putting it? But by convention it's called the magnetic north pole. And it can get very confusing all these different poles when you're talking about this type of stuff. So to avoid any confusion for the rest of this video, I will call the bit of your compass which aligns itself towards the top of the world, is that a good way of putting it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it the North Seeking Pointer, okay? Just to avoid any confusion. And in most compasses, this North Seeking Pointer is a magnetized strip of metal. Now, if you have a reasonable quality compass made by a reputable company, <laughs> I'm not going to say any more on that, your compass has two main functions. The first is obvious, to, you know, to help you uh, navigate. The second function of your compass is to be useful. And by that, I mean it has to be usable in the outdoors. And so it has to be rugged enough to stand being dropped on and banged and <laughs> smashed around, put in your pocket and carried around inside your rucksack. It also has to operate in all types of weather conditions. I've, I've had about 10 different types of weather conditions today. <laughs> so to create a compass that will help you navigate and be useful, virtually all land navigation compasses they have the magnetized north seeking pointer enclosed inside a circular container. Now, the north seeking pointer sits in the center on a fulcrum, which is just, it's a pin or a pivot or an access. So that as you turn your compass, it can rotate. So it always points in the same direction as the local magnetic field, which is flowing towards the top of the earth. Okay. Now, when you first started to learn to navigate, you know, with a map and a compass, 
One of the things that you were told was to always hold your compass horizontal, keep it flat. But this can cause problems as the north seeking pointer isn't pointing at the magnetic north pole. And yes, I know that's what everybody says. I say it on my courses, I've said it in my video, in my videos. But that's just to keep things simple. But in reality, the north seeking pointer is actually aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic field, which as we've seen, flows and dips generally towards the top of the Earth and it's not straight at the bottom at the bottom of the Earth, you know. And before anybody starts writing comments, I know magnetic field lines don't flow, but I'm not going to go into quantum electrodynamics in this video. Now that would be a waffle. <laughs> Put everybody to sleep. Anyway, so I'm going to call it flow just as it's, as it's easy to visualize. Anyway, as I said, the north seeking pointer in your compass is pointing in the same direction as the Earth's magnetic field lines. And this means that near the top of the Earth, where the field line dips down, this causes the north seeking pointer to also dip down. Yeah. So in some places near the top of the world, like Canada, Norway, Greenland, Alaska, Russia, you know, except, you know, this would cause the end of the north seeking pointer to touch the base of the circular container and it wouldn't rotate freely. Now, to stop this happening, some of the larger compass manufacturers, they put extra weight on the southern end or on the, the south seeking pointer. And we mentioned that the, so the southern end of your uh, north seeking pointer. You, the, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, now this balances it out and enables it to still spin freely when you're at the, near the top of the world. But obviously, this type of compass, if it was used too far south in places like New Zealand, Australia, the southern parts of Africa or South America or the um, Pacific Islands, you know. The field lines there also dip down, so the extra weight put onto the pointer would again stop it freely rotating. This is the reason that compass manufacturers divide the world into different zones, magnetic zones, and they make compasses where the north seeking pointer has extra weight added in, at, in different points along the uh, pointer, so that it will work in the, the zone that it's designed for. For the vast majority of people, just buying a compass designed to work in the area where you live is, will, is all you need, that'll be fine. But there are a few people who want to be able to use their compass in different magnetic zones, and these are the people who should buy a global compass. Everybody else doesn't need to. Now, the main difference between a standard compass and a global compass, you see, we're finally getting here, <laughs> apart from the cost, is that in a global compass, the north seeking pointer is made from a non magnetic material. Normally, it's just a thin strip of plastic, and this is kept separate from the magnet. Okay, there are other differences, uh, but that's the main one. The north seeking pointer and the magnet are two separate things inside your compass. I do appreciate that this can be a little difficult sometimes to visualize. So, being a highly skilled carpenter, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> what I've done is <laughs> I've made these, uh, the, hopefully, this will make it uh, the whole thing easier to visualize. I'll try and get this as level as I can. As, a, as you can see, I'm not a carpenter by any means. So here we have a visualization of a standard compass, which spins round. And if you're too far north, then the compass, the north seeking pointer, will, be, will dip down and it will scrape along the inside of the uh, circular container. If you're too far south, then the south seeking pointer will also scrape and so it stops it freely rotating. Now obviously what you can do, and it's very normal, is just change the uh, the base of the compass but sooner or later you're going to forget to do that and it's, it's going to cause problems. So all global compasses work on this principle. They have a magnet in the center and they have a separate north and south seeking pointer. Now, if you notice, the magnet, because it's quite small, it can dip and 
Can you see that the magnet is changing, it's dipping north, now it's dipping south. But the pointer itself stays horizontal and so it can, it can all, it, whichever way the magnet dips, the pointer can always rotate freely. And that is how all global compasses work. So that's the difference between a standard compass and a global compass. In a standard compass, there is a magnetized strip of metal or a disc which can freely rotate and it will rotate until it aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic fields which generally flow towards the uh, North Pole. In a global compass, the magnet is so small that it allows it to dip in any direction and there is a north seeking pointer attached to that magnet but it isn't affected by the dip. So the magnet dips and the pointer can still freely rotate. So I hope you found this uh, interesting. Thanks for watching.